Good morning, winners. Welcome to Terry's Tips. So listen, do you know that you literally have dozens, yes, y'all, dozens and dozens and dozens of credit scores? So many of you guys, when I talk to you one-on-one, -on -one, you'll say, I'm a 700 or I'm a 650 or I'm a 600. And I think in my head, no, you're not. So today I'm going to break it all the way down. And y'all know how I do, okay? I'm going to explain, number one, what is a credit score? Number two, what do they rate with credit scores? But I'm going to answer the big question for you guys. Why are your credit scores different? Get a notebook, get a pen, because once you understand this, then it gives you power. It gives you leveraging power to improve your credit and also to reach your financial and credit goals, okay? Got it, got it, good, y'all. And if you are new, welcome. My name is Terry. I am a self-employed entrepreneur, an investor, a mother, a YouTuber. Every Tuesday and Thursday morning, I upload brand new videos about all of the above, about you know entrepreneurship, personal and business credit, you know, mindset, real estate investing. I would love, 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 love for you to be a subscriber, like, share, comment. Let me know if this information is helpful, guys, and I'll do my nugget at the end. All right, so let's jump right in. So first, what is a credit score? Guys, all it is, don't, we're going to simplify things today, okay? All it is is a mathematical equation based on the information on your credit report that is intended to assess the risk in lending to you guys. So lenders are looking at your credit worthiness. How likely are you to pay back the um, item that they give to you based on your previous credit history, right? And so this is where if you have a high score, you are a low credit risk. But if you have a low credit score, you are a high risk to a lender. That means that if they give you a loan, you're less likely based on a low score to pay it back. So this is why that they will deny you if you have a low credit score, okay? And in general, depending on the scoring model, it can go from anywhere from 300 to 850. Remember that, guys. Write that down. 300 to 850. A 700 and above is really where you want to aim, okay? And in general, you can still get some items at like 640, 650, but the higher the credit score, the more options you will have, the better payment terms you will have. Got it, got it, good. All right, and then what do they rate? Even though the scoring models are different, I'm going to break it down why your scores are different. In general, they're still rating the same things. So this is where 35%, you guys, is payment history. That is late payments, how you pay your bills on time, having past due items, collections, charge-offs. 35%, the biggest bucket of the FICO scoring model is 35% is payment history. The second biggest bucket, guys, is 30%, which is amount owed, or sometimes you hear it called capacity. This is can, um, can kind of equate to um, the utilization on your credit cards, the balances on your loans, is how much are you using, how much of your credit are you using on your revolving trade lines, and also sometimes there are balances on your loans, okay? Those two buckets, 35% and 30%, for payment history, guys, and amount owed are the two biggest buckets. That's 65% of your FICO score, okay? Then there's three other smaller buckets, which is average account length, new credit, and credit mix, okay? So those five areas are the things that most of the, all the scoring models are going to rate, but now I'm gonna break down why your scores are different. Dun, 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 dun. But listen, one more quick thing. FICO, Fair Isaac, the company that actually makes credit scores, I want you to understand it's the biggest company. The, the Fair Isaac scoring model was just created in 1958. And I'm gonna tell you why this is important because you guys, some of you guys need to really, really get this. And in 1991, guys, that's not too long ago, is when FICO, Fair Isaac, just gave credit scores and it kind of released them to the credit bureaus. Why is that important? So sometimes when we're talking to our parents, our grandparents, our great grandparents, or maybe sometimes maybe you're somebody older who's watching this and you don't really understand credit scores. It's because scoring the scoring model has not been around for a very long time. Guys, 1991 is not too long ago. I'm recording this video in December 2020. So this is where when you hear somebody older saying credit is the devil or they don't understand credit or they're telling you you need $50,000 to buy a house or to pay for a car in cash or you need $30,000 for a car, it's because that really is their reality. They don't really understand credit. But guys, you have the opportunity and I want you to think about it like that. You have the opportunity to pay a couple of things 
on time, have a high credit score, and then leverage. We have people buying houses for $3,000, $5,000, $10,000 because they're leveraging their credit and only putting 3% down. We have people buying cars with 0% down because they have good credit. We have people getting business loans, legacy, wealth building because of their credit. Guys, we are in an age where your credit is super important. They use it for everything, for employment, for utilities, for cell phones, for houses, for businesses. So yes, yeah, sometimes some people in the older generations may not understand credit. Maybe you're older and you don't understand, but now, baby, credit is how they do it. Everything, okay? So looking good on paper can really, really, really change your life, okay? So I want you to kind of get that in your spirit to understand it. It's only been around. They only released FICO scores to the credit bureaus in 1991. Got it, got it, good, y'all. So let's talk about why your scores are different. So number one, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, the three national credit bureaus. Guys, they are competitors. They do not share information. They're not even government, right? They're not even government agencies, even though they're regulated by like the Fair Credit Reporting Act and the Federal Trade Commission. They are private for-profit companies and they don't share information. So this is why you can get a collection deleted from Equifax, but do not assume that it's gonna be deleted from TransUnion or, Ec or Experian, or don't assume that just because you got it deleted from Equifax, it's gonna automatically be deleted from TransUnion or Experian. Guys, the companies don't share information. So this is why when I'm giving you tips, I always say dispute with all three credit bureaus. Check all three credit bureaus because it will not just automatically update on all three. When you're doing disputes, when you're doing investigations, it always has to be done on all three bureaus because they don't share information. That's number one. Number two, the information actually on your credit reports are different. Yes, y'all, what did I say in the beginning? The score is calculated based on the information on your report. So if the information on your report is different, your score is going to be different. Let me explain. Big companies, Discover, American Express, usually your mortgage companies, they report to all three credit bureaus. But some of your smaller companies, some of the um, credit unions, even some of the other types of credit like personal loans, don't always report to all three bureaus. Some may report to one, same, some may report to two. Guys, remember that you actually, like the credit bureaus, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian, they don't get paid by you. They don't get paid by the consumers. They actually get paid by the creditors that report to them. I want you to think about this. That's why you get free copies from annualcreditreport.com. That's why disputes with the bureaus are actually free. You're only paying for a service when you're paying for their monitoring, which is something newer that, they do, that they've done, or when you're paying for the scores. Under the Fair Credit Reporting Act, they cannot charge you for an actual credit report. They can charge you for scores. They can charge you for monitoring. So the only time they get money from you, the consumer, is through monitoring and through scores, but they get their money from the creditors. So big companies have the money to report to all three bureaus, and they do. But smaller companies and different types of credit only report to one or to two because it's not worth it for them to report to all three. So if you have a personal loan for $20,000 and it's on one bureau and not the other two, well guys, your debt ratios, your average account length, all your balances is going to be different. That score is going to be different. So the information on your reports is different based on the companies who report. That's another reason why your scores are different. Number three, the scoring model. Guys, the two biggest ones are kind of Vantage scores and FICO scores, right? And you know, Y'all know, if you've ever followed me, I heavily talk against like Credit Karma and Credit Sesame because they use Vantage scores and that is not a super accurate scoring model. I've had people be like over 100 points off because the majority of lenders use FICO scores. So when you want to know what your actual score is, you actually want to use a service like My FICO and Credit Check Total that actually give you FICO scores not Vantage score. So your scores can be different based on the scoring model. Another reason why your scores are different is because the versions of the models. So guys, we're in 2020 where FICO 10 just came out and some companies are using it, but it's FICO 9, FICO 8, FICO 7. Think about it like a Microsoft Word, like Windows, where uh, this is where they had version, you know, XP, and then they had 10, and then they had, you know, um, professional. So 
the same information generally, but slight variations. Think about cell phones, how there's, you know, a galaxy. Look, I'm an Android person. <laughs> how there's like a Galaxy 8 and then a 9 and then a, a Note 20. Generally the same thing, but different versions. The FICO scoring model is the same thing. So you can apply for one company and they're using FICO 8 and another company they're using FICO 10. Generally the same information, but slight variations. So based on the actual scoring model, your score can be different. Another reason, like there's a ton of reasons, that's why you have dozens of scores, is the type of lender and the type of credit. Meaning that your score for a mortgage is going to be different than a score for a credit card. So a credit card company is going to be looking at your credit history as far as your credit cards, your capacity, your inquiries. Whereas a mortgage lender may more heavily rate your debt to income ratio. An auto lender, right? If you've paid a previous car on time, they're going to heavily give you good points. But let's say you had a repo. Guys, everything on your credit is relative to also what you're trying to apply for. So it's hard to get an auto loan when you've had a repo. It's hard to get a mortgage when you've had a foreclosure. Impossible? No, right? Because I've helped a ton of people get those things. But harder based on the actual item and the type of lender. Guys, even the types of lenders like big banks, like, you know, a Discover, a Bank of America, a Wells Fargo is going to rate you a little bit differently than a smaller like credit union or a smaller bank, a PNC, a Santander, a Navy Federal Credit Union. So the type of credit and the type of lender, guys, you have dozens and dozens and dozens of scores. So my advice to you, okay, is number one, some tips, you know, Pay more attention to the accounts and the information on your report than the score. Have a range and have a general idea, but if you pay something off, make sure it's zero. If you got something deleted, make sure it's actually removed. Get into the habit of actually checking your credit report and not relying so heavily on just the actual score. Number two is understand the approval criteria of the items you're applying for. If you're a 600, a 610, you probably shouldn't be applying for a mortgage with Wells Fargo. Okay, look, I'm just being honest, right? So the big banks sometimes have a, a stricter kind of credit requirement. Doesn't mean you can't get items, but sometimes half of the, well, a lot of times, Half of the success I get from my clients is matching them up with the right type of lender. So sometimes if you have credit challenges, I'll use a mortgage lender or I'll use um, a retail lender or I'll use a credit union. So matching you up with the right actual lender can be critical. Find out the approval criteria of one bank if you want to apply for a personal loan and one bank has a minimum credit score of a 650 and one has a 680 and one has a 600 and you're a 630, well, you know who you're applying with. Apply with the lender who most closely matches their, your actual situation, your credit. And number three, if you need help and if you're still confused, reach out to an expert. Not somebody who just, you know, watched a couple of videos and claims they are a credit expert. No, an actual credit expert. Me, I can help you, okay? So if you need help, you know, invest in a reputable, reputable credit service, credit system to kind of help you get back on track. I'll actually link my video about, you know, why Credit Karma's vanity scores are not accurate. And I'll link my video about, you know, five tips to actually in help increase your score. And I'll even link my video about, you know, leveraging the Fair Credit Reporting Act to um, help improve your credit, guys. So I post a ton of free information so that you guys can watch the videos and execute. Watch the videos and execute. Got it, got it, good. All right, so let's recap. So your scores are, you have dozens and dozens of credit scores. It varies based on bureau. It varies based on scoring model. It, base, it varies based on the version of the scoring model. It varies based on the actual lender. It varies for multiple reasons and I outlined them all. So hopefully now, well, no, y'all now, now you know why your scores are different. And for my nugget today, guys, so I talk so much about if you want different results, you need to do something different, but I get it. It can be hard. So my tip for you today, my nugget is to break up your new goals into manageable, smaller, like kind of milestones. So let me explain. Let's say you need to work out more. Look, this one's for me. You need to work out more. You may not set a goal of working out two hours every single day. Just 
do something smaller and manageable to get into the habit. Okay, I'm gonna walk for 15 minutes a day, or I'm gonna go up and down the steps 10 times. Or if you're a male, maybe you're gonna do push-ups. Maybe you don't start with 50 push-ups a day, but you start with, I'm just gonna do 10 push-ups every single morning. And so you build the habit and then start adding more. First it's 10 push-ups, then it's 15 push-ups, then it's 20 push-ups, until so you actually get into the habit of doing a whole 50 every single day. Same thing with your finances. So maybe if your problem is spending or paying your bills on time, maybe you'll start with just putting your credit cards on auto pay for the minimum payment. Eventually you'll work on not using them so much or maybe putting on auto pay for the full balance, but maybe just on auto pay for the minimum payment. Maybe your budgeting is off, right? So maybe you're not going to go from, you know, spending $3,000 a month to spending $1,000 a month, but can you get your hair done, you know, every other week instead of every week? Can you cook at home instead of going out every other day for um for dinner and ordering Uber Eats every single day? You know, can you make small adjustments? Can you, you know, save some money on your auto insurance? Can you um decrease your cell phone plan? Can you go from paying, you know, a $300 cable bill to paying, you know, $15 a month for Netflix? Can you do small manageable kind of milestones to help you get to the big goal. Because what I'm finding is that when you try to do a great big goal, right, you kind of get off course, you get discouraged, and then you stop. But if you do small steps to build up, you'll have so much more success. And that's why I talk about reading so much, right? Like the average millionaire can read like 12 books a year. That's one book a month. Well, maybe you want to change your mindset. You want to read more, but you're not good at reading or you're not good at kind of getting into the habit of reading every single day. Can you read 10 pages a day? Can you set a goal of reading 10 pages a day? And then eventually you'll do 20 pages a day. And then eventually you may do like three chapters a day until you're up to reading a book a month that will literally change your life. So with everything, with your finances, with your health, with your spirituality, maybe you're working on your spiritual, your spiritual goals. And maybe, you know, you can't do a 30 day fast. Maybe you start with, can I do three day, a three day fast? Can I pray 15 minutes every single day? What is it? Break it up into manageable, small milestones, get into the habit of doing that and then increase. That will help you with all of your goals, relationships, finance, health, spirituality, with business. Maybe you're starting your business. You just do one thing a day. I'm just going to get my website. Then the next next week, I'm just going to get my professional email. Then the next week, I'm going to get my professional phone number. You no, know, just do one small thing to work towards your goal, and then you will get there. I promise it. Okay, king? Okay, queen? All right, so I hope that that information is helpful. I answered why your credit scores are different, what is a credit score, what they rate, and then I gave you a nugget because I want to help you all be super successful. Have a great day on purpose.